was Bruce spot on with his analysis, or it's just that the tone, the manner in which it came about? He, he had he had great points. Mm. He spoke the truth, and someone was saying, no, but South Africans don't want to hear the truth. That's it. We love the truth. Mm. But there's a very thin line between disrespect and being brutal with the truth. Mm. And those who are smart enough, they know how to maneuver. Hi, my name is Kumoto Mukwena. This is Sunday World Engage Sports, a platform where we interview prominent people in sports. And today we have Morkasano's coach, Steve Compella. Well, Steve, I'm going to take it uh, many years backwards so that the start of an is note. Free State Stars, your club, has been sold and it's now defunct. It's no longer there. It's the club that made you, it's the club where you cut your teeth. Football wise, and Le Pra Mike Mukwena passed. Take a story. How are you feeling about that? I, th I think that should take us, just that question should be sufficient to take us through the one hour or two hours of this episode. It comes a long way. I remember the first time I went to, to Pua Pua. Uh, it was just after I had completed my, my metric because I completed my metric in 1985, 86, yeah, 86. And then 87, I had to go look for a, a temporary job just to get some funds so that I could maybe find myself into a tertiary institution. And 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 it's so funny that apart from the, 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 the scars that are emotional from one's life, I also have physical scars. If you check on my hand here, this was a mark I got bent by a cutting torch at a mine in 1987 as I was trying to make some money so that I could go to school because my mom and dad, obviously, are people who never went to school. They were not educated. Now, I needed to find a way to say, I made E, 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 E. They used to call it uh, Eastern at 8 then. Uh, on three. Yeah, from three. Now, after that, you needed to go to school. Then I didn't want to go, I mean, to, to work. I needed to stay in school. And then I completed my matric and all that. Then that moment after 87, 88, I got admitted to Kwakwa. But 87, I remember, was with Taysuan and my brother, my late brother, Thomas, was playing for Clubs of City. Mm. And then from Clubs of City then, uh, they swung and referred me to Mike Mukwena to say, listen, man, we can have a look at this guy. He's a good player, and he does want to further his studies. And then I went to Kwakwa for education. I went to see a college of education. That's where I had an encounter with the old man. But, but to be honest with you, Kong, uh, if there's there's a generation of people who, who really had a huge impact in our lives, give over Mike Mukwena. The current generation about Dr. Kaisam Dowell, Dr. Evan Koza, uh, Dr. Patrice Motsepe. Then it goes back a bit, Bustik Smurewa, it goes back all Boserel Kovos. Those were the people, those were the the black men who made it a point that the black boys that grow and and probably move towards a stage of accountable men in society. And Bramike did that, you know? The number of people who and I'm trying to reflect on Bramike as a man. The Nate never went to school. He's got beautiful kids, both runs, both coats, and all that. This is Joyce. They are, they are solid male. And Bramaik only finished than a two. And on top of his family, then he had Bosram Rutsuaka as a former teacher. In fact, he's a teacher. Edward Salman is a teacher. David Villagas is a teacher. Moses Mulu is a teacher. Then Ronald Bozaz, the late Hartford Million, but Tembas Tolu, but all these guys got to become something in society because of Mike Mugwet. Mm -hmm. So Free State Stars Abra Mike was not only a football team, but it was an institution for men, I mean, for boys to graduate, to become men. And then you know him very well, Bramai, very humble, but highly focused. And these are some of the men who, when we look back, we say, if we can have more of those with the mentality and the mindset of today, the world could be different because they had a different perspective of accountability and responsibility in bringing up young men. Yeah. In, in whatever form of sacrifices they gave, 
But I'm telling you, we all think the Nibobra sticks. You can forget such people. Yeah, we will forget Brahm Hank. Mm -hmm. And I hope we also become a generation of men who, whatever we do, people must also look back and say, goodness me, the Steve's of yesterday, they took up from the mics. Mukwena spoke before. Now, who do we have today? There should never be a crisis in terms of boys graduating to becoming men, but it remains a responsibility of the men in standing to then bring up the boys in standing. You mentioned the plastics. Yep. They're having, having built a uh, solid foundation. Currently, the current crop of leaders and, 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 and South African people, where are we? Where would you put South African football at the moment? I'm, I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a bit, I'm a bit, I'm scared. And I, I posed this question to one, one, one gentleman some time back. When you look at layers and, and possibilities of succession plans, uh, the, the, I was listening to an interview, Galax, from Cote d'Ivoire yesterday mm -hmm. with Thomas. They were talking about, because it's obviously there's AFCON and all this in Cote d'Ivoire. That part of the discussion was around around the same thing, AOT. Is succession where 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 does it lie in football? A attention of where can we take the game in Africa then triggered the issue of you you need to have I don't know how to coin this in a manner that's not going to be offensive. We need to take responsibility of the two industries that black people did literally all, the tax industry, tax industry and football. Now, if you go to the people who were in football, you were saying the leadership we have now, God forbid, but anyway, nobody is mortal. We're going to have a situation where the current leadership, obviously, because of age and natural causes of life, mm -hmm that they would have to either step aside or the inevitable happens. Mm -hmm. Who's going to fit in those shoes? If the Iron Jew decides, okay, gentlemen, I'm done now, I'm okay, I've saved you, and mm -hmm. can somebody come in? Who's next? So we need to find a way to work on the succession play. And I'm, I'm, a, bit, I'm a bit scared that in football, we don't have a clear plan, plan of, of succession and again, it takes us back to the nature of, of, of leadership sometimes in, in, in Africa. I, 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 I challenge African leadership to relinquish leadership at a stage when there's others who are still energetic enough and powerful enough and young enough mm. to fill in the gaps. We should not be dinosaurs uh, uh, who are sitting and occupying seats. When, when we have, if I have to stand up here and I'm a leader from Africa, it should take me 20 minutes to get up here and grab the bottle of water. We need to get people who are strong and fresh enough, mm -hmm. vibrant enough even from a psychological point of view because modern youth is quite vibrant, innovative, highly intelligent. Though there's lots of other values they lack, which are the fundamental values that the older generations had that they need to fuse in their vibrancy. So what do we have in the in the leadership in football, in my opinion, as I observe, we still need to have people who are ready to say, even when the current leadership steps aside, whatever happens, are they ready to move in? I have a problem. How I looked at it previously, now I say, if you have the main bosses, you have a club boss. Underneath the club boss, there has to be a layer whether it is your CEO, whether it's your GM, whether whoever it is underneath, who is being groomed so that as soon as I vacate to the post or I leave the seat, you are capable and ready enough to take up. I'm not insulting the ones who are waiting to step in, mm -hmm. but I am still saying, are, are, you, are you there? Can somebody say, no, don't worry, Steve, I'm here. If and when anything happens, I'm ready to step in. I've not heard that voice. Mm. I've not heard that grumbling. I know of one or two cases where there was that that initiative or there was that move to say, can, can we can we can we look for a candidate? Can we trigger? Can we generate some interest from people to say, okay, if and when the opportunity comes, then I should be ready. 
There's other clubs whom I think they, they are lining up people to lead their institutions. But beyond their institutions within football, we are going to need another leadership above the institutions at clubs level, maybe at federation level. And we know not the, the, the blame should not only go to, to the ones who are at leadership positions now. It should also be put on us for our players. You should know better in Vlog being in the game. Most of my colleagues, people we played football with, are much bigger in criticism than in showing up to shape up things. We are so eloquent in terms of standing out there and pointing in all errors we see without attempting to get anywhere closer to provide solutions. And I've seen that many a times. Now, I'm challenging all former players to say whether it is at an administrative level, if some of us are at a coaching level, at whatever formal level, bring your level and expertise and experience and not only point at errors and mistakes that are committed by those who are trying. And the greatest danger, what I picked up, Prof. Manaka, is that for those football players who played before with all the experience and understanding of the terrain and the game, who are outside, those who are starting to make it through into football and had not previously been exposed to the game, they come into football, and they, 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 they didn't realize how luxurious this industry is. And they want to take the game away from former players. It's going to create havoc. The request is that former players come and be part of it. Share your experience and expertise. You're giving back. And these ones who are new in the setup, come in, add value. But don't take it away from people who contributed. Because if you take it away from the hands of those who contributed, even though they may not have gone to the same levels of education like you do, where should they, which economy are they going to fall into? If I am more specific, former players may not have necessarily gone to sports science and all these other higher levels or institutions of education. And then because sports is now becoming more scientific, when we invite all these expertise, whether it's your sports, whatever sports scientists with a conditioning coach by kineticist there's a full range of them as they come in and give support to the coach who has been a former player like for instance myself if i had not gone to a middle of education i would then be swallowed by these people because they bring their expertise in terms of okay this is how diet should be nutrition should be hydration should be periodization in terms of training and all that, all the protocols, as they put all the boards of protocols in, if I'm not structured enough as a coach to say, okay, I am in charge as a coach, I have a responsibility technically to align all these departments. If I don't have that level of intelligence, it's going to swallow me because even their discussion becomes complex, a jargon is even different. It intimidates those who are not full of confidence in themselves or in their capabilities. So then it kicks them out because when science gets into sports and then consumes the technical leg of sport, then sport will suffer because it will only be science without their technical expertise. But but coach, there's been calls to, to, to include former players like Lucas Hatel, for instance, similar with the Zambia Football Federation. They had Kanusha Buano, who was the head. And then Cameroon had someone that do like former legends. I, but the, the 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 legends feel like the floor's been closed. They make it difficult. Mm -hmm. They make it difficult for you to 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 penetrate or not even penetrate system to to settle into the system. The system, the soil is not fertile enough mm -hmm. for you to come and settle in, blend and grow from it. Mm -hmm. If you're talking Samuel Eto, could have been different. If you're talking Didier Drogba, a duo. Ganushapwana and all that. Even in them, they had to fight. But the South African system is quite difficult because it is also more political. And you know politics. Politics are quite difficult. Even in a situation where it is purely political game without politics in sports, just politics in politics, it, it, it gets nasty and dirty. 
Now you can imagine these guys have never been expe I mean exposed to the strategizing, the the, the conniving, all the innuendos that you find in politics, where you have to maneuver yourself politically to get yourself to a technical position. We're not used to that. We we honest people. Not saying politicians are not honest, but we're just honest about our trade and all that. So when you say to me, okay, Steve, by virtue of your having had contribution in South Africa, you were the captain of the country. You played for the big team in South Africa. You played for, for, for Free Sea Stars. You went abroad. You came back. You've done this. We think you have enough experience to lead maybe the federation. You'll never find that. But if Steve Compella would then say, listen, I'm, 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 I'm here as a candidate. I want to run for presidency. Uh, I want to run as a president of SAFA. You, you you know what is the procedure. You know what is the protocol. You know what is required for you to be nominated. You have to go through all these, all these, all these. Which some are right. They are correct. You have to be part of the NFAs and all this. But that was the tedious. It's and, and, and it losing progress. It is not but only PG strategic. It is not only tedious. It is strategic. So Lucas must then go become an affiliate in some sort of an NFA somewhere there and set a particular time to come through that time. You, you, you. That's when he has played at the World Cup, when he has played in England. You know what, you know what happens? If you know what happens with us when you, they say to, okay, this guy is a former coach. I mean, a former player. He wants to go for badges. They accredit you for having the experience of play. Listen, if I have international experience and exposure as a player, and then I'm given the opportunity to become coach and study coaching, you want to tell me that I'll have best to go through all these preliminary interviews? No, man, I can't be doing license E, license G, license D, and all that. There has to be a stage where we say, okay, you have acquired experience from your playing days. Now, we recognize that acquired experience. As such, we say, okay, go and study, but you must study starting from this level. Then you can get to a pro license by virtue of having been in other enabling environments, you have such. But in other environments that are not willing to be enabling, they make it difficult for you and you get tired. Mm. And we decide, why need, not that we are being arrogant. We are not arrogant. But we are realistic to say, oh, wait a minute. Now you want me to move from, I have made so many steps in the game. You drag me to go there. And I've been there when I was still young and growing. I know and understand how it works. But now I played professional. I went abroad. I represented my country and all that. So you can just be honest with me and say, listen, let's look for a president of the federation who has football experience, understands the game, who can save the nation. And chances are because we understand the game, we've been in the game, our service is going to be it's going to be genuine, going to be honest, it's going to be practical and relevant because we know what is required for those who are at those platforms. And coach your honest assessment of the standard in the PSM okay? on the field, the playing aspect of F first I think we have to break down the game and understand what could be the PSL. The PSL as a footballing brand, it's got so many legs, you know better, and some I may not articulate as you would. From a commercial perspective, amazing, vibrant, glitter. It, I'm sure it is at the same level as top leagues in the world. Administratively, within the PSA, top class as well. Administration is proper, it's very professional in all that. But the same must go to the clubs, not only the PSL as an organization. The level of excellence for PSL as an organization must also translate to the level of excellence at the same levels of administration, supporting commercial and other within the clubs, mm. and then the brand grows. Then comes in what is more relevant to me, which is technical. The level of technical growth is apparent. Uh, South African teams have grown, and you can see even by, we've got coaches who've gone abroad, they're doing great jobs. OP is just a typical mm -hmm. example of what it means to be respected as a country because of the contribution we've made in football. 
and uh, which then takes me to what I always tell players. I say to them, when you want to buy a player in the world, as soon as you say, I've got a Brazilian player, he gets signed without any doubt. When Nigeria was doing extremely well, when you said, I'm a Nigerian football player, you would get signed without any question. When South Africa was doing very well, when I said I'm from South Africa, even after apartheid, when we got uh, the opportunity to go then to compete internationally, then I said I'm South African because we had won the Africa Cup of Nations and all that, I, I would find a job with ease. Then saying, if there's success in a nation, when there's success in a football club, individuals will shine. You take that Brazilian player blindfolded because you know that Brazil produces good players. You take that Nigerian player because you know that Nigeria has top football. You take South Africa when you know South Africa plays. So teams must do well. Countries must do well that their players get to places without a question, without a doubt. South Africa will have a problem currently of players going abroad because as a country, we have not been at our best. If you go maybe to the Springboks, you say I've got a rugby player, he's South African. That rugby player gets signed even maybe without having been looked at because the rugby game in South Africa is at that level. So when the team, when the nation does well, the individuals will benefit. When a team does well, if Morocco Solos plays amazing football and on top of the log and all that, the individuals at Morocco Solos will get recognition. But the same individual could be excellent. However, if the team is at the bottom of the log, that recognition will never come. So the growth of the game in South Africa is relevant to that. Analogy. But our players are no longer going overseas. That's exactly what I say. Next, that, that's exactly what I'm saying. Oh. But again, the one thing that we must acknowledge, the benefit of West Africans, whom I think are the ones who, who, who are just, they, they just, they just come in, in in Europe. It is because, apart from the fact that they really want to survive the environments that are harsh, and that are lack of resources and all that, it's a question of, at a very young age, they get to go abroad. Mm. At a very young age, these teams in France or wherever, they, they have attachments and links with with academies, even in West Africa. Even the francophone for the francophone political situation of the West. Yeah. Mm. N- now it goes back to the politics, where Africa comes from. We, 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 we were colonized by the English and then the chances of us going to France may be there, but the chances of a French colony adopting or getting more of French-speaking players are more than if it was South Africa. But how many of us would break into the EPL? Is it quality or is it product? A, a, a little bit of both, but quality more. Because if you talk politics, the PFA will tell you that for you to play in the Premier League, there's a minimum requirement in terms of your team, in terms of rankings, and the quality of the player, in terms of the caps they had. You you could say, but wait a minute, what if my team is not doing well, but I have enough quality to compete in the Premier League? If you don't qualify that, then you stand out. Then it becomes a political one. And partly also quality. Because part to the lack of quality is not only to you as an individual, but to the group of the players who are supposed to represent their country. Mm -hmm. So it is almost both ways. It then becomes a responsibility of all athletes, even administrators in a country, elevate their game in a way that when the game is high up there in, in, in totality, then individuals will benefit. How you got to have Lucas Kadebe in Leeds? Then you had Mark Fish in Lazio. Then you had Philwan Masinga Dele. Then you had Shuzu Mushu out. Mm-hmm. Then a whole lot of us were outside the country. And then South Africa had just been readmitted into international mm-hmm. sports. And then you ask yourself, but these guys did not have the international experience and exposure. These guys did not go through a development mm-hmm. process like it happens now. But how did they make it? No, man. They played the game even though it was not that structured, but they had the passion and there was just talent in abundance. But what happened to that now, then comes the social, so social factors. As we speak, you and I, 
I could be looking at my phone and saying, but what's happening on my phone is a distraction. And South Africa has got all these other things that are within our society that are a distraction. And our country, to be fairly honest, is, is rich enough, is adequate enough to have much more diverse opportunities than only football. But uh, 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 the current crop of players good enough? They, as good as you can. I'm, I'm trying to say, but what makes them not to be good enough or what makes them not to get to our level of goodness? What makes them not get to our level of competence, whatever you call it? During our time, if I were to tell you my schedule, I would wake up in the morning at past seven, go to school and work. And then school knocks up half past one. After school, I go to training from three to five. From there, from five o'clock up until nine, I'm at varsity. And from from nine o'clock, I have to go back to work. I'm still living alone. Then you must prepare your school books for the kids because you were my kid. Then you must prepare your own books for varsity because you study. And then you must prepare your back for training because you're a professional. That level of commitment surely says to you, you need to focus. The next morning I wake up, the books are prepared for half past seven for the school kids. I must mark and all that, go teach a school and all that is a responsibility. After that, when the bus stops half past one at the end of my school work, then taking me to training for three o'clock, the bag must be ready because you didn't have this thing that you get your uniform and then clap, everything is there, you have a training center. You had to bring your own bag. And then after that, as soon as you are done five o'clock, you must make it a point that you rush to varsity. Half past five, your lecture starts. That's commitment. You can never find that today. Today, yeah. no, no. There's so much distraction. As we speak, when you are in a meeting room, the guy is itching to have a look at his phone because there's a message that got in. Now, the modern world and technology has just made things difficult for them. And they lack focus as such. He goes into a match. I'll give a scenario that is that is slightly challenging. He goes to a match. He doesn't have a good performance. After a bad performance, the first thing that happens, even as the lineup goes out, solo starting 11. You know, as I read the line out, there's already a comment here. I need daddy when all the... But you have not played yet. The distraction in terms of focusing on stuff that affects your next performance is immense. Forget that. Go into a match. A player has a good game or a bad game, whatever. There's immediate and instant criticism. And uh, they, this, this thing say you cannot avoid it. It is in their face. Now, this human being must find a way to focus on their work, in their trade, with all this criticism and destruction. We never had that. What would happen previously I would play a bad match with playing Kaiser Chiefs at Rennes Stadium. I score a beautiful goal. There would be a small writer. Komoto Mukwen has written Steve Compella scores a beautiful goal at Rennes Stadium. It's gone. If I'm lucky to be part of that piece on the back page of the comic strip, the following day. It's published. Listen, we played maybe Saturday or Sunday. It's published to the next day on a Monday. And then somebody reads it in a taxi. And then after that, it's gone. On Tuesday, something else. I'm normal. It was only that piece. But today, everything is just here. And apart from that, they have lives to live. They have families to look after. Now, apart from having the problem of your career, your job, your playing uh, excellence or lack of, it is also your private matters at home. But all it is, it's the same situation with players in the APA, in the, in the, in the La Liga, in, in, in the Sierra. If, if, if you put the same problem, in front of a guy who's sitting on a multi-million dollar contract. Put the same problem there. This guy has got a responsibility to look after a multi-million dollar contract and bring the same problem to me. I'm just earning a normal rent contract. Who's going to put more seriousness? A guy who understands that these are millions in dollars. I lose this, I lose my life. They, they tend to be more serious and more committed. They even go to an extent of employing a whole lot of other people to support him, to stop him from going astray. You would find that this guy, 
the welfare, how he looks after himself. You can go to LeBron James. You can go to all of these top players. They've got personal trainers. Got a psychologist. He's got a dietitian. He's got a team around him. This team is keeping him intact. But the benefit is because of the resources to protect that major contract. But for me, what you have for me, what happens is Steve Kompina then goes up, I go to Rosebank, is a birthday party and all that. By mistake, whatever, then the bill is not settled. It comes out that uh, this guy did not pay the bill. No, I paid the bill. The only thing is that the person who got the message got the wrong message. And from then, I'm going to live and die by the way that I did not pay the bill. Mm. So the responsibility again lies with the professional to be very careful and take care of yourself because modern life and world is ruthless and unforgiving. You cannot commit an error. And there was no rule for error. And coach, recently you responded to Hugo Post, the Mafana Bafana coach, mm -hmm. saying the level of the PSL or our players is very, very down as compared to West Africa or other parts of the world. I think, I think there were a lot of things that went into my mind when I had to go through what Hugo Bruce was saying. First of all, I was disappointed by his tone. His tone at times came across as someone who, who did not have respect for us. Then he took me back to, you look at, but what could this be? And I had had experiences of a Belgian coach who was disrespectful. And this thing again is happening for the second time and I'm going like, but could this could this be some sort of something from a DNA of this culture of people or what? Then when I looked back, then it took me back to to history. And it pains me a lot. Then I said to myself, first of all, if you look at the history of Africa, where we are as a people in Africa, we are a product and a bad product of the Berlin Conference that occurred where Africa was partitioned into five zones, where resources should have to be siphoned and be taken to Europe and all that and all that by using a way of saying, listen, guys, we can't fight over the resources with these people. We just need to find a way to say, okay, the English, where do you want to eat? The French, where do you want to abuse? Spaniards, where do you want to take? Africa was partitioned. Now, when it comes to Belgium, in my opinion, I'm no xenophobic. I took exception with the understanding of that, but this Belgian guy cannot be thinking like this. Especially when he's in our country and at service, he's earning a salary from us, but his tone was just untowards. And personally, I felt, I don't think this is the way. Then I responded. So whatever he says, there's an interview I just went through two days ago with regards to selection of players. And I made it clear that it is the primary responsibility of the guy at that position to make his selection. I cannot then put him under pressure by saying, no, you must select Mabasa, you must select this one. No, 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 it is his prerogative. But also as a nation, we deserve respect. There's one sad story about our people in South Africa and sometimes in Africa. Because we were brought up with lots of disrespect. We don't see disrespect as something disrespectful. If you were brought up with the understanding that you are less of, when you are put at a position of less being, you won't feel less. It is normal. If people who appreciate life understand life is so important that when there's a crack on the nail, they immediately look for someone to look, hey, wait a minute, let's take this guy to someone, a doctor must be there. If I have a problem with my nose, my ear, whatever, they find an SNT, they are paranoid about life because they appreciate life. And the people who were taught, who were brought up differently, where they say, no respect to you as a person, so my life is not respected. I'm going to behave in a manner where I do not, I do not respect life. Let me put this to context. The history and background of the black race, I'm not racing things, I'm not playing race cards, but I'm being reflective of where we come from. The fact that our lives were not respected, you know where South Africa comes from. When our lives were not respected, we understood life as 
disrespect because we were being disrespected. But for the lives that were respected, they understood life as respect. As such, they respected life. Now, for these ones, who or whose life were not respected, when they lacked the respect to life, people say, no, but this guy is papari. The guy is not papari. You taught the guy not to respect life. Now that he doesn't respect life and you want him to respect life, this guy cannot give you what he doesn't have, which is why then life got cheap. To these people, whose lives were cheapened, and then life here becomes more precious and vulnerable because they were taught like that. And then you find a scenario of there's going to be more of these people committing suicide because they don't have respect to life. And these was feeling, no man, how can these people be so barbaric? Chickens have come home to roost. But, but, but coach, was the was Bruce spot on with this analysis? Or it's just that the tone, the manner in which it came about? He, he, had, he had great points. Mm. He spoke the truth. And someone was saying, no, but South Africans don't want to hear the truth. Listen, we love the truth. Mm. But there's a very thin line between disrespect and being brutal with the truth. And those who are smart enough, they know how to maneuver. In my opinion, if I'm a national coach, in a nation that I respect, I would put it in a way that they understand that I'm not saying it out of disrespect, but I'm being honest, candid, and genuine with them. And it would only take a fool not to recognize that. Equally so, it wouldn't take a fool to pick up that this guy is condescending. And coach, to, 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 to take it back a bit in your coaching career, you would coach men, rangers, dynamos, uh, platinum stars and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2012, I think, you were still coaching free state stars and came to battle him and stuff. And you almost won the league. And I think you suffered some, uh, I would say, I think you were raw. What? Some fight. I a little bit of sports. Yep. Game. A lot of and stuff. You could have won the league free yeah. state stars. We had a great squad. Yeah. That, 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 that was painful. Mm -hmm. But again, oh no. do you then sit back and start complaining and crying about that? No, we, we're not the kind of people who complain or start making noise. I'll give you two other examples of setbacks. I suffered and I thought, but 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 people never remember that. You know, when we when we won the Kosafa with the generation that we're trying to create for 2010, we won Kosafa. The generation I spent most of my time working with the federation. Uh -huh. We played the, the the Zambian team of there's this guy who played for 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 what's the name of this player? Top player, top player. I've just forgotten his name. We beat them five three in Caledonian Stadium in Pretoria. Then we won the Kosafa. And then it was two thousand and four. Then was it two thousand and two or four around there? And then we went to Bloemfontein, played against Moroba Solos of Governor Hunt. I was at Man of Vision there. Mm. We lost in the final and all that, and all the other things. But people are not interested in all that. Even the question that we're trying to pose now with regards to the city of Wandeli, nobody wants to hear that whole. Let, let, let me make, and I have not, I have not mentioned this, but I think it goes in line with all that. And these are some of the things that you as an individual, as a person, because you know it, they inspire you. In as much as they're sometimes painful when you reflect on them, but they become great inspiration. They are the ones that say, it is possible, man, I can do this. That team here runs in a woman, Dovin, Marlene, I am the Kaba, Soriola, Sarata Kuriku. We had a top team. That team can won. win. Kennedy win. That team won the league, but unfortunately, the trophy was not presented and the check went missing. <laughs> so we won the league. <laughs> now, when I, when I talk of that, it reminds me of when I was at Chiefs. When I was at Chiefs. For all the three years. Religiously so. You know how many matches we would lose? All three years. Whoever does not believe this must go back, go check at the DSTV Premiership, click on the year and go to year 2015, 16, 16, 17, 17, 18, you will see. 
every season, we would lose only six matches. Every season, religiously so. Because we had a plan and a strategy. But the unfortunate part of all that, we were just playing draws. You know the last season? I'll make an example. Last season, when I was at Chiefs, and the chairman, the chairman feels so, he, you know, he, because of the amount of work and investment we did for his club, listen, I still believe Chiefs, Chiefs, Chiefs can be taken mm. even further than where they are with a bit of calmness. The last season, with the same six matches we lost, we drew 12. Six losses, like all the other seasons, we drew 12. Of those 12 draws, eight of them were 0-0 zero, zero draws. And I make no mistake, it is not that we're defensive. If there's a team that played good football, was that cheap? Go ask Shaba. There's a stage where I remember Shaba was saying, Coach, I've been here for 10 years, but I've never enjoyed football the way we play. Eight draws only. Of those eight draws, I mean, of the 12 draws, eight were 0-0. Zero, zero. Just score one goal. You have 16 points. When you add that 16 points, on the point to tell you we had, we would have won the league. Do you then go back and regret the fact that goodness me, but why did we draw these matches? Didn't we have strikers who would have won the league? You don't look back, man. But you're saying the template is working. I'm going to apply this thing wherever I go. Because when you apply this thing wherever, even that we say star that was supposed to have won the league, we had the same template. Where I am current, Pimroba Solos, I'm still using the same template. And even Mamiro de Sundowns, they have a sin to sort of to go back to chips. Please, would you would you sum it up? Would you believe that you failed? No. Or, and 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 your exit? No, I the trap yeah. Not at all. And and again, I'm very reluctant to speak of my previous environments in a manner that comes up as if you you're protecting yourself. Let's look at it this way. The our recruitment today had other challenges. Mm. And that if you look at the performance based on the recruitment, we we were falling short of the PSL standards because we just couldn't score goals. The same example that I just made. All those goals, and then, you know, there's something very profound that was once mentioned by Skrima Shavalala. Skrima Shavalala said, good players make good coaches. And then he went on to say, Steve, you can never, you can never coach a bad player. I'm not trying to say the players at Chiefs were bad then, but I'm saying based on the recruitment we had had there, I thought we could have done better to just top it up with some finishers mm. who would then have improved from the eight draws of 0-0, zero, zero, score a goal, a goal, and it gives a championship. We went to two cup finals when I was at Chiefs, two cup finals. If you remember, there was a Telcom cup final we played in Devon against Mamelodi Sundowns. You know, in that cup final, we missed two penalties. There was a penalty miss from Shaba. Mm. There was another penalty miss from Ahamaldi Abrao. And we had so many one-on-ones. And in the same match, we had a mole. We had a guy who sold our gameplay to my melody sandals. Because the guy was not selected to play in a match. He went on to say, no, this is how they will be playing. But I'm not saying it's an excuse and all that. You know what happened to Manuel Luis Sanos? As soon as Coach Pito got to the team that said, okay, this is the starting lineup from Kaiser Chiefs and all it says exactly like that. A confirmation that our own sold us out to the opponent because it was not played. In PE, the unfortunate penalty committed by Umato, then we lost the final in the MTN 8 against Ajax. Should have sabotaged. Not sabotage per se, but I'm 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 being realistic here. I'm 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 saying I'm being more specific in my references and not be too general. And I've never spoken about these things, but these are just facts. Now, how do you plead against that? You're missing two penalties in a cup fan. Okay. Then you go on and play a match in Moses Mabida against Chrissy Stars. Okay, whatever, you lose that match. Now, the whole frustration that builds and builds and builds, then people start to misbehave there. And it was traumatic. Apart from traumatic, 
it was mischievous. But then it takes me back then to say, but Steve, what could have happened there? I was not surprised by the behavior of those people who were chaotic there because society there was in a state of chaos. Now, when I say football is just a microscopic reflection of society, that's what I refer to. Let me take you back. If you remember, there was a campaign on fees must sport. Then, fees must sport. Fees must sport. Fees must sport. And libraries were getting bent. That is mischievous from society. Okay, we ignored that and thought, ah, no, man, this is just something minor. Sport is a microscopic reflection of society. You find what happens in sports in what happened in society. Forget that. One, two, three, one, two, three, there were protests about the, the then president. Hashtag Zuma Masport. Zuma Masport. Where does it come from? A society that said fees must fall. It escalates now. Society is becoming mischievous that fees must fall, Zuma must fall. That is going to reflect in your sports. Then was Mabida. The same delinquency from education, the same delinquency into politics, then becomes delinquency in sports. Steve must fall. So the pattern is clear. So it would take you to be, to be blind, not to realize that what happens in society will ultimately happen in sports. Then I'm saying, why then can't we use sports to reverse back and influence society? If society fails to plan in human beings, good core human beings, let's rather use sports these sportsmen must be given good core human values, respect, accountability, honesty, discipline, it's just a whole lot of humanity and all that. Bundle them so that as they go back to society, they have those values because family couldn't deal with it. School couldn't deal with it. Church couldn't. Society failed. But at social level, at that level, Sports must arrest that. So we as coaches also have a responsibility not only to coach players, but develop me. I normally say to these football players, I am not only here to coach you to play, but I am here to develop Samuel's daughters and husband. I'm developing husbands for some girls waiting out today so that when you go out, you go dining with this girl. When they come closer, you pull the chair for them. As they get in, you put them on the chair. And then you go around, you sit down. So you earn some element of respect. If I don't teach you that, then I'm killing the poor girl who's going to be getting married to you and you have not been molded enough that you are a proper gentleman. So what I am cooking in you as a football player is not only technical, but I'm also molding your character and personality to become a better man for somebody's daughter. Yeah. And we fast forward uh, a few months ahead and then you end up at Golden Arrows yeah. and stuff. And all of a sudden, we get a major shock. Yeah, Steve Gopela joins Mami Lodi Sandow. Leave Golden Arrows and the shop. Go back to Blue Body SLT. Yeah. Before I went to Arrows, I was at Blue Body Sales. My first month at Blue Body SLT, we had a hell of a squad. Celtic had challenges. Mm. And I've got this blessing, I call it a blessing of always being thrown in environments that are quite challenging. And it is a blessing because you only learn from that and you only grow from such because environments that are too soft and too enabling, there's little growth happening in you as a person. Then I went to Blue uh, Blue Vone Celtic. We had our own issues and all that. You know, at Blue Vone Celtic, I was chosen as man of, I mean, uh, uh, coach of the month with all the struggles we had. Sometimes we'd hardly have training sessions. They would come there and then they don't want to train because they were not paid. Then Patrick Diem will also be, we had good players there, but they were stubble, mm. big personalities. Now as a coach, why didn't do I remember we went to Golden Arrows. We beat them 2-0 in Durban. We went to Golden Arrows. We had not trained for the week. And if there's a person who used to bait us 
was Sismato, the CEO of the PSL. I would always call us this, hey, Sismato, we have these channels. That lady would always be there to assist. Sometimes we'd be moving into a match and players say, we're not playing the match. And I'm thinking, but the reputation of the PSL, these people, these they, these bidders work so hard to keep the brand of the PSL and everything up there. And these players are threatening that we're not going to play. What about the reputation of the league? Now it is my responsibility as a coach and a leader to say, yes, it's my talk. We have a bit of a challenge here. I'm sitting on a dilemma here. Help me out. And then Blue and Celtic will happen. Then I went to Aros. Aros is when we did well. Then I was working with Manza. Anyway, I had worked with Manza and Lakers mm. from pre stars and then went on. Then I met in, in, in Devon. We had a hell of a good product. We built the product. In no time, then I had to go to my melody Sandal. How did that come about? I must thank Mrs. Smartwell for that. It wasn't easy, it was difficult. I think it came at the back of Dr. Patrice Mutsipe was looking at a, a different way or an innovative way of how to how to consolidate the gains over the seven years after Peter was mm-hmm. leading. Yeah, Peter was very successful at Mamelodi Sundowns. But Peter's success did not come over two years, mm-hmm. did not come over three years, did not come over four years, did not come over five years, did not come over six years, did not come over maybe around the seventh year. But Peter struggled. Peter was on the verge as well of being harassed by supporters. But that's football for you. Only those who lack the understanding of how the game works, then you start to lose hope and think, no, it's not working and all that. But Pizzo is a perfect example of what happens in football when you understand what you're doing. Then Dr. Patrice is when we we're on top of that. And then he said, okay, uh, Matt, Steve, we're having a lot of here here and Rulana Mukwena. They're going to be co-coaches because they had been working with Pizzo. And as such, they're requesting that they needed someone who can then come in and, and help them. And then I felt, no, man, let me say, I worked with Rulani uh, for another problem. I worked with Manova as well. We had a coaching course together. We are colleagues. We are brothers at one spot. And one of my primary objectives was, I got to make it a point that this thing works. Mm. Because in most instances, where there's black people together leading something, in one or the other, there has to be some demo. There has to be some evil. Because it was, it was it was unorthodox. Yes. The coach is your contribution. The other coaches who's in charge who makes the final decision, only though they told us, but it is. Three. It was quite innovative now. My primary objective was to see to that, listen, this thing doesn't fail, doesn't bore, because it's going to reflect on black leadership. Then I went in there. I'm a head coach. I had been head coach for years. And then I'm joining other head coaches. But the arrangement is quite complex and it needs maturity. So when you go in there, you've got two coaches, Coach Manova, Coach Roland. So would you still want to be a third mix? You need to be matured enough, selfless enough, humble enough to say, no man, this is complex enough. Let me not complicate it further. I need to find a way to manage this so that it comes out clear because what is most important is the product we are building. Individuals will come last. And then I went in, found a way, then I, I got to fit in the system. Mm. And it took us three years. In the three years, mm. we won back-to-back championships. We won the MTNA the very first time they said it had been won. We won the Telecom Cup, won quite a number of trophies. And I'm happy. I don't even remember them. Mm. Because in my world, in my life, success should not always be visible. Success can also be invisible. The success of the strength of this building lies in the foundation. You don't see that. And then and, and when did you get disillusioned with that? No, it's disillusioned, sir. But but it went out. There's a book, there's a book that I that I that I like referring to. Ego is the enemy. And this book was given to me by a friend to my to my daughter's uh, not Paulo's friend, not Paulo's man last book. Uh, the name of the girl came Pan. Pan who bought me a book, there's a present. 
and the name of the book is Ego is the Enemy. The one big line that I pulled from that book, and I must then compare. The book talks of in any process, in anything that to do with, there is this innocent line that is success. You keep on going to success, but at some point, there comes a disease, a mean disease. Ego is the enemy says, watch your ego. Because whilst you're building a product, when everything else is going on, everybody is fighting to develop with this media house. Everybody is desperate. You're doing your part, everybody, your people, everybody working very hard. But the minute it looks like something is just about to come up, each one of the people who contributed innocently, immensely, in the growth, that to get into a disease called me, that's selfishness, mm. but that's ego. Mm -hmm. So watch your ego as a man, because it is your ego that's going to destroy you. So when I went through that and I realized that now, but this thing now is getting to a point where it's unsettling a lot of things and it's going to create maybe conflict and all that. You have to find a way to be honest and truthful with yourself without disrespecting people you are with. Yeah. And, and, and then coach, it would be, be to that. It would be a miss of me not to ask this. Was it differences with Coach Ulani? Not differences, but I love I love I love how how Dr. Patrice Motsipe dealt with this because the the questions he asked me were so sincere, so mature, and so 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 candid. And let's make no mistake, that president is intelligent. Mm -hmm. He will ask you a question. If he doesn't get the answer, maybe he knows, or maybe he anticipates, he will ask it the other way around. Anyway, he's got law background. Then he says to me, uh, Steve, tell me, is this the working? Then I give my responses. And you know how I am with the responses. Uh, I, I'm never I'm never careless in, in words because words can be dangerous. Weights have destroyed the empires. So how you put weights across, you must know they are not like a finger. They will never come back. So you got to put your weights, package them properly, and think before you say it. So before you could literally release your tongue, your brain must have digested enough that whatever comes out of your tongue has been so thoroughly, it's so refined that you listened to it and you were never offended. Because if you can say something, and then when you replay what you said and you feel like, oh, I shouldn't have, then you did not think properly about what you said. Think before you say. Then, then, then it went on to my responses to the president. And then he felt, no, this guy either is being diplomatic or the answer is too refined. I want it wrong. And then instead of him saying, Steve, is this still working? Then he goes on and throws in the future. He says, do you think this is going to work? And I felt, this guy, this president is smart enough to, to listen to what I'm saying and hear what I'm not saying. Let me rather say this is certainly not president. I don't think it's going to work. And then he said, unfortunately, that'd be the case. And, and I was thinking about it because here you are, you are about to write a conclusion about yourself or open another chapter about yourself. The conclusion you write is a conclusion that says, unfortunately, the road comes to an end. And the chapter you're likely to create, it is a chapter that you must know you will live in that chapter up until the term of your contract is over. Are you prepared to go through that term under circumstances and conditions, or you feel it is better conclude here and find another way out because it would be far too long for your stay mm -hmm. for that period under circumstances. And, right. and then how did the solo move then come about? Who approached to and how was it? The, the solo move came at the back of good relations I created and I have with my million mm -hmm. so which even to be I'm proud to say, listen, they looked at them. Starting from the board of directors, the president himself, the chairman, the, the family look after. 
Now, when I left, it was cordial, like in any environment. In sports, as in politics, have no permanent threats, have no permanent enemies, because it is always dynamic, it changes. And my advice to politicians, have no permanent threats, neither should you have permanent enemies, because your enemy today may be needed tomorrow as an alliance. And your friend today is going to sell you out tomorrow when you compete or fight for a position in presidency. So there's no permanence. The same in full court. When I left, I made friends. Then, Muroga Solos lost the coach. Okay, coach Musanya Tama had done a good job. They were in the top eight and all that. As soon as the news was out there that now this guy has just parted with Sundowns, so Sundowns has allowed him to go. Then I got a call from the president of Brother Solos. Then I had a meeting with the chairman. And as you would say, the rest is history. Oh, yeah. If, but, if I had been a bad boy and been all over the place, first, it would have created a rake and a sour taste within my Louis Sundowns. Secondly, it would have told Brother Solos, watch who you are employed. Because sometimes our arrogance misleads us in thinking that I am too big for the environment I find myself in. Now to deal with the environment that I'm in, I will show how strong I am. Literally, do you know that someone is watching? Mm. So it is not only your level of arrogance in coming out. It is about the expected landing where you go in that, hey, this guy is a wild horse. How are we going to deal with it? And they, they, they say that you're on loan to more persons. I also wrote a story about your settlement. Mm. And Zandon is still I, I had I had I had a one year to run. Obviously Sundowns takes care of a whole lot of business they get involved in. And as soon as that had to come through, then they had to factor in the issue that listen, and now you'll be moving on. So it's not a law. Because I had a year to run with my melody Sundowns. That year is obviously running out but I'm working at Morocco Solos. So everything is just above board. No bad feeling, no nothing, no loan. Everything is okay. At the end of this season, you can give me a job. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be unemployed and I'm looking for a job. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. Great pleasure. Great pleasure. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.